right, so I'm sure you guys are all wondering what's been going on with the S10. Um, to be honest, not a lot. <laughs> um, things have been slow. Have I've gotten a few parts in. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the last video, but if I didn't, I'll mention it again. And for those that are just tuning in, uh, LS Fest, we blew the motor up in the truck. Um, it has been pulled out and thrown away. I do have another engine on its way to fill that empty engine bay. And I am not meaning to rhyme, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, one of my buddies in Utah, uh, hit me up and was like, Hey, I've got this spare motor. If you want it, you can have it. Just got to get it from Utah to Arizona. But luckily I have another friend that is in Utah visiting right now and will be coming down here in the next week or two and he is going to bring it down for me. So awesome. Free, free motor, free transportation. I'm, I'm going to kick him some money for, for doing that for me. But so that's, that's cool. And then also the main point of this video is I'm going to try and put the cooling system in the back of the truck. We're going to put the radiator up under the bed in between the frame rails and um, a few parts have came in for that. Let me show you what I got. Over here in this box is the new radiator that we're going to be using. Try to put that over here. So this radiator, as you saw from the box, is a frostbite unit. And I think it originally fits like a 64 to 66 F100 Ford pickup truck. Um, the only reason I went with this radiator is because Holly was having that huge sell not too long ago. And this brand new radiator was $60. Yep, $60. Normally like $430, but they had it marked down to 60 bucks. So I could not pass it up. It's a three core radiator and the thing's massive and I'm pretty sure it fits between the, the frame rails. <laughs> I'll have to double check that, but if not, we'll make it work. But yeah, so 60 bucks for a brand new aluminum radiator from Frostbite. This is the old radiator and I was just going to put it up underneath there, but being the iron block, oops, being the iron block, there's quite a bit of rust and stuff in this. And I don't know, I was gonna go to, I wanted to try and fit the biggest radiator that I could up underneath there. So I was gonna buy a new one of these. This is a Speedway radiator. The, du Gosh. the double pass. So these radiators are pretty cheap. I think they're like 225 right now. And you can get them anywhere from 22 inch up to 31. This one's a 26. I was gonna go to a 28 and I almost bought it. And the night before I was gonna buy a new Speedway radiator, I found that one on Holly's website. So I'm so glad that I found that because that saved me a lot of money. I still can't believe this thing was 60 bucks. But um, I think the old shroud, this shroud right here, might fit that radiator. No, it's a little too small. I can already tell. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, this draw a little bit too small. Technically it would have to go that way, but yeah, a little bit, not the right size. So we'll have to figure out a shroud or I might just put two fans directly on it. But yeah, so that's the radiator. I'm gonna cut the radiator cap spout off. I'm probably gonna cut off the hose outlets and weld on AN fittings. But that all depends on the water pump placement, which brings me to my next part. I think it was the last time I blew the engine up in this truck. I talked about moving the radiator to the back. And at that time, uh, Jerry from Mazir, we all, if you're a car guy, you're familiar with Mazir Enterprises, badass water pumps, cooling systems, stuff like that. Um, 
But yeah, Jerry, one of the guys from over there, emailed me. He watched the channel and uh, offered some some tips and tricks on doing a remote radiator and making it work. Um, so we kind of talked back and forth. I decided at that time I wasn't going to do it. Um, I just wanted to get the truck back up and running. Didn't want to go through the extra cost of moving the radiator. So I didn't do it. Um, but this time around, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to move the radiator, help get some weight in the back of the truck. Um, so this year at LS Fest, I actually got to meet Jerry. He had his truck out there running in the LS truck class with me. And uh, fortunately, he made it a lot further than I did <laughs> in that class. But yeah, we, uh, we talked and I told him I was going to move the radiator to the back and I needed some sort of solution for a water pump. Um, he told me that you can do it with the stock water pump with the belt driven pump on the engine and put the radiator in the back. And it, it can work, but it's a lot harder to get it to work. And most of the time you need a helper pump to, to make it work. So the other option was a fully remote electric water pump. And that's what I decided to go with. So here's what we got. Jerry was nice enough to throw in some swag. Got a nice dad hat there, t-shirt, banner for the garage. He hooked us up. So, but this right here is what we really want to look at. So we'll set this up here. I'll get something to open this box and we'll take a look at this thing. All right, so this is their 55 gallon per hour of luck. <laughs> really? Oh, this is why I hate open box videos. Anyways, this is their 55 gallon per hour remote water pump. So comes with a little pigtail. That's nice. It's got an inline fuse, a uh, weld on mount, instructions. We might need those. And then here is the big Mamma Jamma. Look at this guy. Billet impeller. This thing is trick. So, weld on mount. Gives you a few different ways to clock it all the way around there. Um, in the instructions, there is, you know, you have to mount it a certain way. You can't mount the thing like upside down and sideways and stuff, or otherwise it won't work. But threaded inlet and outlet, I believe it's a 20 AN O-ring. So they have options for either AN style fittings or hose style fittings. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet, so I did not get any yet. Uh, we're gonna get this thing kind of mocked up and placed as close to the radiator as possible. This pump needs to be as close to the radiator as possible. So I'm kind of hoping that like, using this mount or maybe make my own mount that I can like mount it right to the side of the radiator somewhere close like this and just go boop with a hose. But we'll have to see once we get up underneath the truck, how it's gonna, how it's gonna, you know, lay out. But yeah, this bad boy is trick. All built aluminum, this thing is nice. Way nicer than anything else on the truck, I think. <laughs> I hope everything that I just said made sense because it feels like I was rambling and speaking very fast. But yeah, I changed my clothes because I'm going to get up underneath the truck and see if this radiator even fits. All right, so I had the radiator up underneath the truck. It's kind of hard to film under there, but use some bungee cords to kind of hang it where I think it's gonna fit the best. And it turns out that it's gonna fit great. It takes up almost all the room under there, which is awesome because I wanted to try and fit as big of a radiator as possible underneath there, just to help with any kind of cooling problems that we might have by moving it back there. Um, but yeah, it fits great. Um, like I said, this is gonna get cut off and just capped. So the radiator cap will then be up in the bed up here 
I'm going to have to build like a, a surge tank and either put it over there on this side. I'm pretty sure it's going to go on this side. But yeah, over here, like kind of in this area, I'll mount like a surge tank with the radiator cap up here. So that's the highest point in the whole system. And that's where it will get filled and it will go down to the radiator and then go up to the engine. Um, the, the pump, I'm trying to debate, like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to end up cutting one or both of these hose um, bibs off, but I think I'm going to try and make a mount so it comes with a steel mount, but obviously you can't weld steel to aluminum, but I'm thinking if I remade that in aluminum and I was able to set the pump kind of right on the radiator right here, that way it's just a, a 90 degree hose and it's right into the pump. So <clears throat> that's probably how I'm gonna mount the, the pump. I'm just gonna put it right on the radiator. Um, this is pretty thin. I mean, it's not like super thick aluminum. So what I'll probably do is weld like an eighth inch thick pad on here first and then weld the pump onto it just to prevent any kind of risk of it ripping the uh, the bracket off and creating a, a leak. So I think we're just gonna mount the pump directly to the radiator, short little hose, 90 coming out of it. And then this one will cut off, cap it. And I've got a bunch of these, where's the big one, right here. A bunch of these, uh, aluminum bunks and we'll probably just go out with this guy and then run the hose up to the truck and then from the truck back into the water pump here so i need to get a thread in fitting for this to probably a n2 so that's what it's looking like what do you think roxy she don't care as long as she gets to sleep in the garage with the ac on She's happy. <laughs> and then, let's see here, I've got these two 16 inch fans under here. I've got three 16 inch fans. These ones are old used ones. One of them kind of has a bad motor, but let's kind of do this for mock up. See if I can set this on here without damaging it. Probably not quite two of them. So, I don't know, either do a shroud with one 16 inch fan or probably two 12s. Probably two 12s. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Now, since I'm going to be running a remote electric water pump, um, the, there's no longer a need for a water pump on the block. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen the ICT billet adapters and stuff where it bolts on to each water pump outlet and it's threaded and you can put in your, your choice of AN fittings. Um, the problem with those, it, it's expensive in fittings. So, cause each one of those has to come out. They're either a 16 or a 20 AN, probably 16. And you've got one, two, three, four fittings there. And then those two hoses have to wide together. So then you have another four fittings, that's eight fittings. And then you have to have two Ys. Those are expensive. And then two more fittings on the hoses going back to the back of the truck. So as you can see, the fittings add up very quickly. 16 or 20 AN fittings are not cheap. Um, the other solution also comes from Mazir, which is what I'm gonna go with. I don't have it yet because we got to do this Johnny Cash style and buy one piece at a time. But eventually, we're going to get one of their water manifolds. And what it is, is a manifold that bolts on just like a water pump. Let's see if I can find it in the catalog here. So I can show you guys. But it is basically a, a manifold that bolts on where the water pump goes and creates the crossover and the Y so you don't have to have a whole bunch of fittings. So all you have is two fittings coming out. 
then run back to the water pump. It's a little bit more money up front for the manifold, but I think you save money in the long run with fittings. Let me see if I can find it here. All right, well, they don't have a picture of it in their catalog, so I'll put a picture of it up here on the screen. But yeah, like I said, it's a little bit more expensive up front, like shock value when you see the price of the manifold versus the ICT billet adapters. But I think you save a lot of money in the long run with, with hose and fittings. So that's the route that I'm gonna go with once I get the engine and everything. But I just wanted to get the, the water pump and the radiator situated, figure out where the pump's gonna go, if there's room for it underneath. And like I said, I think something like that is going to be the best. So we'll mount like that, just a short hose to go into here. We'll get a hose fitting so that it looks just like that coming out of there. Boom, boom, quick and easy. The only thing that I'm not sure of that I still need to ask Jerry about is if I need to run a thermostat. So they make inline thermostats. It's just like it sounds, it's a thermostat that goes in line so I'm not 100% sure if by doing this, you don't need a thermostat and you can just run a temperature switch and at a certain temperature, the pump turns on almost like a thermostat opening, um, which is now that I say it out loud, kind of makes sense. Uh, or if I need to run an inline thermostat. So we'll figure that out. Um, another thing I kind of wanted to talk about is, uh, so after the engine blew up, I had a couple people reach out to me and uh, saying they wanted to basically give me money and send me money to help build a new engine. And although I appreciate that a lot, um, it's actually kind of crazy to think that people want to send me money to, to help me build an engine. Um, I just don't feel right taking money from people. It just feels weird. Um, so what I decided to do is like, for those people that want to support and help the channel out, since I don't have merch right now, which I'm trying to work on getting some more merch and stuff like that, um, but instead of just sending me money or anything like that, I'm just gonna put like an Amazon wish list link in the description below. And if there's something on there that, you know, that way you're not just sending me money. Um, you guys can kind of pick and choose something that you guys want to send me, but I don't know. It just feels weird. Like I don't, I don't really want to ask or take anything from people. Um, but if you feel so inclined to support the channel, there will be an Amazon wish list link down in the description below. So huge shout out to Jerry over at Mazir for getting me taken care of on this project. Uh, if you guys are ever needing anything cooling component related or starters, or flex plates, or they even sell like heim joints and weld tabs and all kinds of stuff that I didn't know they they, they sold. Um, give them a shout, they'll get you taken care of. They're awesome people to work with and I appreciate them helping me out on this project. Um, but that's gonna do it for me guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.